We're at Leonardo AI, and I want to show you the real-time canvas. On the home page, it's right up here in the top row. We'll just click that, and let's get our lay of the land here. Over on the left is your canvas. On the right side, you have what your output is going to be. So you're going to be drawing on the left, and don't worry if you're a horrible artist. That is not necessary to make this work very well. So you're going to draw on the left, and the interpretation is going to be on the right. But it's not just going to use what you draw. You can also start typing your prompt down here, and it'll take both your prompt and your drawing and figure out what you're asking for and make it come to life here on the right. On the left, you got some buttons we got to talk about. We have add image, so we could pull an image into this canvas. We've got a little selector here. If we need to select things, we've got our eraser if we want to make stuff go away. The most important part of this is the brush. You can set the size of the brush using this up and down slider, and you can change the color of the brush by clicking on the color, and you can pick any color of the rainbow. And once you have some things on here, you can also use this little eyedropper tool to select a color from somewhere on your screen and use that as the color you're going to paint with. I'm going to start with blue up here and I'm going to paint that in just like that. I told you you don't have to be an artist or anything. I'm going to change colors. I want something that looks like maybe roughly the color of sand. Just wipe that on there. I haven't even typed a prompt. I haven't even told it what I want and looking at those colors it's come up with something over here on the right. So if you're a really good artist unlike me, you might not even need a text prompt. You just draw the picture and it'll come up with something. That's not going to work for me. I just typed in white sand beach and sure enough, it figured that out. But I'd like a little less beach and a little bit more water. So let me go take this color here, click my little eyedropper, and I've still got this slider. Let's see, we'll leave it there about 140. So let me darken this and then we'll go over here. We're going to take up some beach, and I'm hoping because I have two different blues there, it's going to pick up that I have some water and I have some sky. That's not quite what I was looking for. So let's come back and get our yellow sandy color, and let's do this. All right, and it gives me a sand dune. Get a blue again, bring this out, and there's kind of what I had in mind. But I don't have to be finished yet. Let's grab this again. I'm going to go all the way to white out here in this water. Ooh, that was way too big. So we need our undo. There we go. We got our undo. I'm going to change this down kind of smallish. I draw this and this. I just typed sailboat into my prompt and it put a sailboat in there. Of course, I think that sailboat's probably a little bit too close to shore, but you know, that's okay. If I want to fidget around some more, I can do that. I can pick my blue watercolor here and I can just sort of make that go away. Now I'm using the sky blue or what I had as the sky blue over top of water blue as well. So it might do something different. There we go. Now because I said sailboat in the prompt, it just dropped those sailboats in there. That's cool. Now what if I want some fancy clouds up there? No problem. I will pick white and we'll drop a cloud right there. And right there. Oh, now it turned those into balloons, I guess because two really round objects, but we can fix that. There, now it understands that they're clouds. Take a moment and reflect. Look at what you've got over here on the right side. Look at what came out of this, and then look on the left side at what I scribbled. Like, really, you don't have to be an artist to get something really, really cool over here. Now, I gave it a creativity strength of 0.7. The higher this is, the more the AI robots will be able to take some creative liberties with the things that you type and the things that you scribble up here. High is obviously good in my case, since I am not an artiste by any sense of the imagination. And I have the alchemy set on dynamic. If there was something more specific that I wanted, I could certainly pick that here. I could change it to a painting. I could tell it specifically I want photography or any of these other options. If you're done with your masterpiece here, you just click this delete button. It's over on the left side. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I'm sure. And then you can go on to your very next thing. Your creativity options are limitless. So let's do something entirely different here. We'll pick a blue. I like to get some sky in there first. I, again, I'm not an artist, so I have no idea, you know, what, what you're supposed to do to do artsy things. Oh, that's gorgeous. I don't know what that is, but it's 
gorgeous. And then let me come over and get some green. We'll draw our green on there. So here I'm gonna say a backyard. So I said the backyard of a middle-class home. We need to get something that sort of resembles a house type thing here. So let's bring the size down a little bit and we'll just draw like, ooh, got a little tall, that's okay. Fill in like so. Let's go for a little darker color. I need something that sort of looks like a roof, I guess. Go like so. Maybe we should get some kind of color going on here. So we'll try, oh, that looks pretty good. Grab something like this and see what we can come up with. I think we need a dog in the yard. Let's put him right about here. And notice how that just completely changed everything. When we added that dog and we got something lifelike in there, it took it from more of a, I don't know, a flat drawing to a lifelike image. And don't forget, look at what I've got going on over on the left side. I mean, this is the horrible thing that I drew just with this little prompt. This is what it came up with. I mean, is this nuts or what? So let's start this time by typing our prompt and see where it goes. All right, so my prompt says a portrait of a beautiful woman. I've got this black background, so it's just dark. You can see a bit of a silhouette starting to come through. Let's lighten that up. Let's click our color selector and I'm gonna click background and I'm gonna take this all the way up to almost white. And I think that's looking pretty good. And of course it has created us a beautiful woman over here on the right. Now we need to do some drawing. I'm gonna use a relatively small brush size here. We brought in some dark eyes at this point. That changes the nose. Oh yes, we've got the hair flowing down. Now how it managed to come up with what it's got out of my snaggles here, I have no idea. Ah, the last one was too much. There we go, that's better. Maybe one less, ah, less. Yeah, it was doing just fine without me messing with it. I don't know why she's looking at us this way. We'll make her 40, brown hair, blue eyes. And let's change dynamic and tell it we want photography. We'll cut back its creative strength and it gets, <laughs> it gets really close to what we drew. And if we put its creative strength way up, it diverges a lot from what we drew. I'll go back to the point seven. I just wanted to show you some of that uh, divergence or adherence that it can do. Now, why don't we go ahead and get a better background in here. We started with the gray, that was great, but it's just kind of bland. So there, that's something that's looking a little bit better. We could maybe dial in these blue eyes a bit. We can always go right up here to Instant Refine, or we can upscale image. We're gonna give Instant Refine a shot and see what it does. And that's not a bad job at all, considering what I gave it to work with over here on the left. You can click this gear icon up here and then change the refiner strength. You have a choice between high, medium, and low. And the lower the strength is, the more it's going to resemble your original generation. And the higher the refiner is, the more it's gonna diverge from what you generated originally. Smooth mode would be okay for paintings, good for cartoons and that sort of thing. But you wanna turn that off if you're doing photography style stuff where you want details and crispness. We're gonna come back over to our personal feed. This is after the refinement. I think that came out amazing. This was after we did the instant refinement, and then this is after we did the upscaler. And I think it did a fabulous job. And that's just a little bit of what you can do with the real-time canvas in Leonardo AI. If there's something that you'd like to know how to do in Leonardo or any other creative tool, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas of videos to make that are the things that you actually want to see and want to know how to do. If you're not using Leonardo AI yet and want to Join me in the fun for creating visuals for your content creation projects. There's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. So if at some point you end up making a purchase, I may receive a small commission and I sincerely appreciate it. If you've never used it before, I'd highly recommend you check it out on the free plan. You do get 150 free tokens a day. Now that doesn't mean you get 150 free images. It depends on how you spend them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.